Welcome, everybody, to the Competition Archery Media Podcast, where we explore all things pertaining to competition archery. I'm your host, PJ Riley, and our CAM podcast is brought to you by O'Neill's Classic Archery. With us today, Rio Wild, and you folks out there can see that hat that Rio is, is wearing there. Rio, first, thanks for being here today. Oh, thanks for having me. I, I love getting to talk to you guys. <laughs> Big announcement pertaining to that hat. Let's jump right into it. You tell us what it is. Uh, I will be for 2023. I will be the Korean national compound head coach. And so it was, it's a wild thing to even hear my name said <laughs> in another deal, but yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be happening. Okay. So you're the Korean national coach. Is that for 2023 or what's the, what's the term of that? If there is one. Well, it's for the contract I've signed through is 2023. Okay. Uh, we've talked about longer, but <clears throat> we're going to wait and see how this goes for the first year because they have never, ever had a coach from outside of Korea come coach any of their teams. How about that? So how did you get brought into this? Where did this come from? Well, they had, they told me they have been looking for a little while <clears throat> and they really hadn't found someone they, they just were in love with or didn't want to move there or, you know, in the, in the aspects. And so kind of in a funny roundabout way, I was at uh, my wife's Christmas party and I was looking on Instagram and I, and I try to answer all my messages. I know I'm not great at it, but I try. And one of the guys from Korea had messaged me saying, oh, you know, I, I love meeting you at World Cups and World Championships. You were always nice. It was good to talk to you. Good to meet you. And I said, well, yeah, you know, I remember you. And it was great to get to talk to you and stuff. So, you know, we just kind of messaged back and forth a little bit. And then uh, we come home and I went to bed. And uh, the next morning I woke up a little early and I saw I'd got another message from him. And he said, would you by chance be interested in being our national compound head coach? And I was like, wow. And so it was funny because my wife hadn't woke up yet. And so uh, about two hours later, I said to her, hey, I got this message wanting to know if I'd be interested in this. And she's like, did you say you dream that? And I'm like, <laughs> no, like it was, it was a message. So I showed it to her and said, am I reading it wrong? Am I something? Cause like I said, it's a really big deal. Yeah. And so she ran and she's like, no, you're right. So we, we, uh, messaging back. I said, what are you looking for? What are we entailing? And so we just got into negotiations and we worked out a deal. I will be there for 10 months this year. I'll be at all the events that the compound team's going to go to, we're going to the second World Cup. We're going to the fourth World Cup. We're doing world championships. Uh, big focus on the Asian Games, because that's big for them, and the Asian Championships. Right. Gotcha. Tell me about their team. You know, we don't hear, of course, we know about the Korean recurve team. We don't hear a ton about the compound team, but you you probably see them more than anybody uh, out at the World Cups and stuff. But yeah, what, what kind of team are you coming into? Uh, we, we have a really good team. One of the gals shot a, in 2019, shot a 900 at Vegas. So okay. we know that she can shoot. Yeah. Uh, we had another gal finish in the top four at the World Championships last year, in, or two years ago in Yankton. Uh, we have had uh, two guys that have been on the team for quite a while on the men's team. They were part of a, a group of three that set the world record for qualification for a team event. So I, I mean, we got some, some guys that can shoot there. So it's not like I'm walking into nothing. In fact, after uh, I got a chance to spend a week there, I learned a lot that they they've got where they've got on hard work. They really don't understand the tricks and the nuances, the tuning a bow or the little tricks that will make them better. I think I I think along the way that's what's going to be my biggest advantage to help them. Uh, in fact, I my coach that speaks English really well goes, "Hey, I don't understand group tuning. Can we go?" And we walked over to two of the guys and we started group tuning their bow, and it was hysterical because the kid shot five sixties in a row. And I was huh. like, wow. And he's like, wow, that's pretty good. And so we proceeded to work on it a little more and everything else. And then funny part was he got a new bow like a couple hours later. So I'm like, oh my gosh, we just got this bow shooting really good. And so we took a lot of the things off it and integrated it to the new bow. And I I left that afternoon. We did some other stuff and came back in the next day. He's like, dude, this thing shoots better than the other one. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's kind of funny. It's an interesting thing to go teach them. And I'm excited. I, I think we can do some cool things. And, and, and I think it's good for archery in a yeah, whole. Yeah. I mean, the, the ultimate idea is that 2028, there's compounds in the Olympic Games. And this is them. They want to be ready if it does. Right, and right. 
to me, if, if I'm a nation, why not? Why not invest the time and the money to make sure you're ready and, and do that? So it's a, it's a, it's a really cool deal and, and they're really excited. So Rio, how long is your international career? When did you start shooting international stuff? Oh my gosh. When I was like 19. So that's 30 years, 30 years. Gotcha. And so talk about the difference in Korea, the archery team over there. I mean, that's a big deal. That's a major sport to them. Oh, it's huge. It's, it's like, uh, when I went to fly home on, uh, the last day I was there, we stopped by one of what they call pro teams. They have, uh, major sponsors like uh hyundai steel and so we stopped at their their facility there and i mean they have a training center just for them and and they have events and it's archery in korea is one of the top five sports yeah you know where like hockey might be in the top five or basketball like so it's one of their top five so it's a big thing to them and so to me like again just makes this a huge honor and so it's really cool to get to go over there and and describe i know you got to experience some of their training uh josh grind was telling me a little bit about it i mean it sounds like training that you know our pro athletes as far as you know basketball football whatever you know the ball sports it sounded like they do what our pro nfl guys do oh yeah the national team is is pretty impressive in fact on the drive back to the airport the guy that uh arranged me to become the coach said he was worried that I would think that they work too hard because <laughs> he's all his experience with other archers was that, uh, they just, they only practice a few hours a day. Yeah. And I said, well, I'm not one of those. I, I have a range in my house. I shoot a little bit, so yes. I'm a little different. And so we got talking. And so when I got there, they get up at 6 AM and they all meet because it's a, a multi-sport training center from wrestling to gymnastics to weightlifting to all these speed skating all these different sports are there so they line up on an indoor track and they do almost like a, a cardio like a i want to say kind of a, a yoga dance thing that they get up and do in the morning kind of stretches them out all of them and then, yeah. yeah and so at six in the morning, yeah. then we'd go on to, uh, because there was snow there, we'd go into the gym and everybody would get on treadmills, stair steppers, everything for 15 minutes. And then when we were done with that, we actually have our own physio that works with the compound team and she would stretch them out. Like she'd do huh. stretches for them to get them started for the day. And then we'd head off to breakfast, but you'd be there by about seven. And so by the time you were done, everything you could get, get eaten, you'd probably be back to your room about seven thirty, eight o'clock you had time to get showered and get ready and you'd head to the field. We'd hit the archery field by nine. Wow. And when we got there again, they would stretch out again. Like the physio lady would go through stretches, you know, keeping them loose, everything like that. And then we would shoot from that time till noon. And so, I mean, that's a pretty hectic morning in itself alone, Yeah. but then they would go to lunch and at two o'clock they'd return to the field and we would shoot from two till five, five thirty, just depending on the day. And then they would go to the gym and do a weight training from then till for an hour from then till six thirty or seven. And then it was dinner time. And so yeah. that was five days a week, just every day. Like we were up and doing that. So yeah. it's, it's a different world compared to what well, I, I, I don't ahead. even think our com our recurve guys at the training center do that. Right. Well, I was going to say, what do you, I mean, everything that you've accomplished right now, you've pretty much accomplished by yourself. Your yeah. training, your you know, you have sponsors and all that and coaches and stuff, but your training is on you and you're not working with anybody in terms of, of you know, a coordinated team facility or anything like that. How, no. how does that work in your head when you think of what you had to do compared to what they're doing? Well, you know, what's funny about it, PJ, is like for me – I learned a lot about bows to make them shoot good and how to help it and, and everything those ways. So to me, that was a big part of my, was always learning, right? figuring out how to make it do better because I mean, the U S has had the best compounders in the world. When I sure. was competing, we, we were the toughest. Yeah. So I always had to figure out how to get that little edge. So with these guys to go set a world record for qualification and the Gaussian and 900, they literally did it off hard work. It was right. not and, and talent, hard work and talent, not, Knowing how, because to give you an idea, this was my, one of my favorite stories. 
one of the gals, when I first got there, I started talking to her and helping her and stuff like that. And we worked on her bow and made some few changes. And by the last day I was there, I, I said to her, how's everything going? I'm leaving. I want to make sure everything's good. You know, if you got any questions, let me know. You can message me. But I said, how's it going? She goes, well, I have a problem. And I said, what's your problem? She goes, my bad shots hit tens. <laughs> and she's getting ready to go to Vegas. Yeah. And she's like, my bad shots hit tens. My 10. bad shot. And that's and a problem. I, is, is, is that a problem? And she goes, yeah, because I want to know when I make a bad shot. And I'm like, can't you feel that? Can't you know? And she's like, well, yeah, but I want the bow to tell me. I said, why? Why don't you want your bow to be forgiving and help you? And and when, because if you go to Vegas, you make that one bad shot and you shoot a 900 because it caught rather than it didn't, you won. I want that like, problem. Yeah. And she's like, huh. So it's, it's a mindset that they don't have and they're learning. And it's like, that's why I say it's really cool because they have a whole different way of thinking about archery than we do. Yeah. And so to be able to teach them some of the things like that is really going to be fun. That is interesting that now that you say that, I mean, they have this rigorous program, whereas in here in the U S you guys had to do it yourself. But as you said, you guys were always the best, you know, everybody was gunning for you guys. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's crazy. Well, it is. It, and so I said, like I said, it's a lot of learning. You know, I mean, it's, it'll be fun. I I've like, Learn they still have factory strings on, so I'm going to try and get them some little better strings that fit their knocks better. Like, their knocks don't even fit really good. They literally are just, huh. they have a box of strings. They go and get a string out if something goes wrong. No kidding. How about Yeah, that? so it's it's a, it's a going to be fun, and that's why, like, after being there for a week, I was really excited because, I mean, yeah. to teach them about bows and setups and everything else, I think that they've reached the levels they've reached. They really could do some cool things as a team. Yeah. What bows do they shoot? I mean, do they are they like the U.S. where it's Hoy, you know, Matthews, Bowtech, whatever? Uh, we had a few that shot Matthews. They're all. It's interesting because they the federations over there instead of being like sponsored like we are here, and I have companies take care of them. The federation buys a lot of the equipment. Okay. So they've been buying a lot of Hoyt bows, and so that's what they're a lot of them are into. I'm going to work on them, trying to get them into some more Matthews and see how that works out. But right, you know, gotcha. right now, I'm my goal is to get them to win. That's where I'm at right now. Yeah, so they just they rolled in a bunch of new bows the other day, so they were putting them together. They told me so. So what's the first event that you will be their coach at? Uh, the second World Cup in uh, Asia, which okay. they're saying. Is Shanghai, but who knows with everything going on in China, we don't know. Right. We were planning to go to three World Cups. Uh, they decided not to take us to Colombia because they want to focus more on World Championships and World or Asian Games because okay. those are two really important ones for them. So they said, "Well, we'll just pull you out of Colombia and do that." So I said, "Okay, that's fine. You know, you're right. the bosses. We'll we'll get us ready for what we need to get ready for." So yeah. How, how big of a team is it? How many archers are we talking about here? Well, again, this is like, there. I have six men and six women. Okay. And uh, we have a selection process in uh, March, and they will increase it to eight, which they'll oh, bring yeah. it up to the level they have their recurve at. Gotcha. And that's kind of, like I said, a lot of this is to try and start preparing them for Olympic Games, and they're going to they're gonna start doing a lot of, like, putting stuff in and their school systems and working it up. In fact, we had some good talks and I was explaining to them. They're like, well, you know, we, we start with elementary with recurve and we go here, here. And I said, you know, it's not a bad idea. I said, cause I do love walking in here and working with your archers because so many of them know how to pull through and make a good shot because they've been raised with that whole recurve on how to pull through and everything. Right. I says, I don't mind that. So I said, maybe what we look at is if you got a recurve shooter, who's a pretty good shooter, but just struggles with getting his fingers off. He might be a really good candidate to be a compound because we can put a release in his hand and fix that problem in a hurry. Right, right. How about so, that? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's going to be interesting because, like I said, I even I stopped at Hyundai Steel on the way out, and their coach was, like, asking me a million questions about coaching compounds because they, they really just don't have the knowledge of, like, because if you look, I mean, you got guys like Braden who shoots straight up standing. you got me who leans back, Mikey who leans back. So which is the right way? Yeah. You know? And that's what I told him. I said, I'm not sure that you can say that one is right versus the other. It's just what fits and what's comfortable. Well, even so, the practice, like you are a guy who likes to shoot a bazillion arrows. Yeah. Chris Perkins doesn't. Yeah. Agreed. Just, yeah. just different styles. 
it is. And so, like I said, it's going to be fun. It's, it's really interesting. And it's, to me, it's a huge honor. Like, yeah. I mean, I can't even tell you like the head, the head national coach that's over both recurve and compound. We sat down and had a good talk and he's like, you know, it's a, a pretty cool thing that we got you here. Cause he says, when we walk into the field with a Korea on our a K on our shirts, it causes fear. Yeah. Yeah. And he says, I think with you around, you can help us do the same with the compound. <laughs> and so, um, so what now, what does this mean for you? So, okay, you're spending a year being the Korean national coach. How about you as a shooter? Are we like putting a pause button? Putting a pause button on it for the okay. year. I will be at the classic, uh, but for the year, it's going to be a pretty good pause. Uh, a lot of my sponsors are, are pretty supportive of this because as you know, I mean, Korea being a big sport, why not? I mean, yeah. I'm over there telling them what to shoot or trying to get them to shoot what I want. So, and I, but like I said, again, my biggest thing is for them to win. I want them to be comfortable. Right. I want them to believe in what they got. So to me, it's a lot of that, but, yeah. uh, it's, it's just kind of a pause, which will be tough. Uh, that's one thing my wife's like, how much is it going to kill you to not compete <laughs> for a year? And I said, I, if you know me, it's a tough one. That's not, not in my cards. And, and she said, but it, it did come at a good time. You're in some divisions. You're not in the senior yet and others you're in the senior. So it's kind of a, a middle year thing. So it might not be too bad, but it is such an honor that I really have a hard time passing up. And I, and I think for the sport of archery in, in general, it's huge. Are you because, go ahead? Yeah. Yeah. Cause if you, if we get Korea doing this and other countries that are getting behind it, the odds of it going in the games are bigger. Right. And so to me, it's like, and, and I, I've always said if compounds got in the Olympic games, it would, I mean, the industry struggles to produce enough product now. Yeah. I mean, you order, you have a, a weight, a big weight. <laughs> Dude, wait till you put a compound in the Olympic Games and every guy out there bow hunting's like, I'm going to go shoot for the Olympic trials. Yeah. You know, I mean, bows will be on a on a premium hard to get in equipment. For so, sure. Um, I mean, it would be a huge infusion in it. So I don't know if you have played out this scenario in your head yet, but one of your archers makes it into the finals against like Braden Galantine and you're in the coach's box for Korea. Are you going to be able to not fist bump Braden or <laughs> I'll be able to fist bump. I always, to me, when I watch archery, I want to see the best so for sure. whoever, or even in anything. Yeah. I, I will tell you, I mean, it, it is hard. When I first put Korea on anything, it was weird. I've been American since the day I born, I believe sure. red, white, and blue. And so it's a little different, but to me, it's, it's a job and it's, it's a huge, like I said, huge honor. Like, yeah. 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 If, if you, if you're an archery and you know anything, the Korean Federation has been huge throughout my whole career. Yeah. And so, I mean, they, they work with, uh, Hyundai and Kia and all them are their big sponsors. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a big thing. And so to me, it's, to me, that was the biggest part. Like if, if I was some other country had said, Hey, come do this and pause your shooting for a year. I'm not sure I would have, right. I'm not sure, but with the support that they're giving me. And I mean, and, and honestly, it's a different culture. Yeah. Like, we talked to archers and I'm like, Hey, try this. And in the U S some guys, eh, I don't like that. I don't want to do it. Do they try it? Yeah. It's not a question. They, they just, they do it. And if it doesn't work, I can, we can move them back, but it's, it's not that questioning of, well, let's not do it. So, right. Right. And so, and part of this I'm going to be doing is I'm going to help them set up a youth program, how to teach the youth, how to teach their coaches, you know, doing seminars that I've done the past few years are a real big help in a lot of this because I have things that I've taught and things that have been good to help other archers. And so it's, right. that'll be a big help in what I'm doing. Was it just because recurve is so big to them that maybe compound didn't get the attention that maybe it should have through the years or what? I, I just think it's cause it's not in the Olympics. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, and, and they, they told me back in the eighties, they, they started a program similar to this before the 80 Olympics. And that's when they started winning medals. Gotcha. Yeah. And so, like I said, this is a big part of them. Like, Hey, we see that it could be on the horizon and we don't want to walk in and be second fiddle to the U S or third fiddle or, you know, right. So, but to me, it's like I said, I, I root for the best of anybody when it comes to Braden or whatever. I mean, I don't be wrong. I want my guys to win because yeah, yeah. that's what I'm getting paid to do. And so I will help them the best I can. But uh, I would just think being human, that would be 
strange, not not uncomfortable, probably comfortable, you know, if it's Braden because you guys are friends and all, but I would just think that would be odd to be on the other side of the line from him after all these years. I mean, how long have you guys shot together? Well, I not have USA on my back. I, I think yeah. that's the weirdest part of any of it. Like, because, you know, I've stood in the box with other archers against Braden. I mean, even right, American right. archers like Chris Shaw or something else. So, so to me, that's not the biggest thing. It just is, it will be the non USA on my back will be the weirdest part of any of that and showing up to an event. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And, and, and even doing it in a coach's position versus an athlete. Like, right. Yeah. You know, it'll be different. Oh, and is this, so you're coaching, are we talking like pretty much strictly 50 meters outdoor target archery or is indoor a part of this? Uh, well, we have talked like right now, when I went over there last week, there was some indoor because they were getting ready for Vegas and stuff like that. Yeah. Cause some of their pro teams are bringing them to Vegas. Okay. So they were like the gal saying, Oh, uh, every, my, my tens, I badge out to ten. So, so I worked with them on that stuff. But as soon as that's over, we are, uh, we'll have a camp in Salt Lake the week after Vegas. Okay. We're going to, you know, so the guys from Hoyt come, come out and teach them about the bows. Cause that's what they're using. And the guys from Easton are going to come out and do some stuff and give them some tours. We'll see both plants and see that stuff. But, uh, we're going to train there for a week, just like we do in Korea. I mean, we'll start okay. in the mornings. It'll be a busy full day. And then after that, I go back with them from there. So, yeah, gotcha. Do you recall during times in your career where you competed against Korea? Did you have yeah. matches against Korean archers or the team as a whole? Yeah, I have. And I like, it was interesting too when they first come out because I do remember George Technichoff telling Dave Cousins that the Koreans will whoop us. They'll because of their the, what they have and what they do, they will beat us really bad. And yeah. it was always like, eh, I don't think they know it's going to take a long time before they get to where we are. Right. And so, I mean, they, they've got a long ways in a hurry because of their hard work, but I, I think to get over that next level, they just never had the the understanding. And, and even at that, like I've learned that it's harder to get equipment over there. Oh, okay. That makes it tougher too, because uh, one of the gals going to Vegas, she went to put a couple of twists in her string to change her draw length a little bit and the serving cut. And so it was like, Oh my gosh, what do we do? So I took it apart and reserved the, the string myself. Like, Oh, gotcha. Instead of having another string there available yeah. to do, she didn't have that. So, you know, and I didn't want to change everything up, but it's, it's, it's a different world in that aspect of here. I, I call and I can get a string in a day or two. Well, I know when we see the Koreans and some of the other internationals come to U.S. tournaments, the one thing they do is stock up on equipment before they go back. At Vegas, oh. you know, they're buying everything they can to take back with them. Yeah. Well, people don't realize how hard it is to get stuff in those places. Like, I didn't understand. I mean, in their workshop, it'll be different when I go back because there is things that I'm like, yeah, we need this, we need this, we need this. And so there'll be stuff I bring back that will make it easier than right. what I had to do then. So to me, that's a big part of it is, is just, again, understanding, like knowing what I can do to help, I think will be huge. Yeah. Yeah. How about that? What, what does this mean for you? Are you like living in Korea for extended periods? How does this work with your family there at home? Uh, my family's going to stay home because it's a 10 month contract. Yep. So I will be living at their national training center. Okay. I have a room, uh, their, their training center. I'll be honest with you compared to anything in the U S makes their makes the U S one look not as nice. Really? Like, oh, I mean, they have a little like doctor's office hospital thing with two doctors that are on call 24 seven. Uh, they actually that? have a dental and an orthodontic office there. Huh? Like, I mean, all of it's there and taking care of whatever you need. Uh, the cafeteria is huge. I, I mean, just even the, the weight room and gym area. Cause yeah. I did live for so many months down in San Diego. You could fit the cafeteria, the offices and the gym that they have in San Diego in this. And it was still bigger, man. And so it's, as a center, it's, it's amazing. And so like, I have a, a little twin bed in my room. I have a desk, I have a fridge, I have a bathroom and a shower. And so, and then right across the hall is laundry. So, I mean, it'll be different. I mean, it, it'll be tough to be away from my family. That is a sure. big, that is a big part of it. That was honestly the only part that was a negative because yeah, to yeah. me getting to be the honor to go do this for them and, and with them was huge, but 
so the travel will be will be interesting it's not too bad uh going there from i go like salt lake to seattle seattle to seoul so it's not terrible and i think it's a 12 and a half hour flight from seattle to seoul right and so it's not not super because i live on the west coast it could be way worse to have to take an extra four across yeah yeah you know so it's like a two hour flight to Seattle and then 12 from Seattle to there. So not terrible. And what are the, what are the stretches you think you'll have to do? You know, I'll be in Korea this amount of time and then I can come home another stretch. Then I can come home. Yeah. We, they gave me four weeks of vacation. Okay. So we've kind of set it up that like, I'm going to come home for spring break with the family. We might go do something then that way that that week is taken up. And then, another nine weeks and then I'll come home and then another one and I'll come home. And then the last week I'm supposed to be there after the Asian championship is right before Thanksgiving. And so I think I'm going to take a week there and come home early. Cause that's when my uh, anniversary is. I uh, got to do that. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm missing <laughs> the birthdays. That'll be the hard part. Yes. But, you know, so yeah. How old are your girls now? They are 14 and 12, 14 and 12. Okay. What yeah, do they, they think did, about they this? Want, What's that? What do they think about this? I'm sure you've had the uh, conversation. They think it's really interesting. They're, they're talking. It'll be tough. They're, they're like, it'll struggle, but they're really excited. They think it'll be really cool. Um, my oldest at first was like, well, I'll move there. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know that that's what you want. So now she's kind of come to realization. She doesn't, wouldn't want to do that. But it's really funny because when I went over there and started talking to the vice president of the Korean Federation, he was he was so excited. He's like, Oh, well next year your whole family will move here. And I'm like, ah, that I don't know about, but <laughs> you know, I, my goal is to go get this year and do a good job and see what we can get set up and running. Cause to me, that is the yeah. biggest thing where we're at. The first year can be huge steps. So Rio wild, all the championships you've won, all the tournaments, et cetera. And now you're coaching the Korean national team. Did Rio wild 30 years ago, who was working at UPS, would you ever envision where you are now? No, not, <laughs> not even a chance. Like no way. It's, it, it's almost surreal. Like um, me and Logan at times talked about if compounds got in the Olympic games, countries you would coach for. Yeah. And Korea was always one we brought up both of us because of how supportive and how backing they were. So I think that's kind of when I read that to my wife that they'd offered me this job that she was like, are you, did you dream that? Is that what like <laughs> to me? So it was, cause it was, it's such a good federation. I yeah, mean, yeah. I mean, I, I got there and they took me into the office and instantly gave me like a two hour presentation of like where they're at, where their goals are, what they want to achieve, what their plan is. Right. I mean, all of it. And I, to me, I've been around a lot of organizations. I've been part of boards. I've been part, I never saw anything that detailed than that. Like, precise and planned out like yeah. i know why the recurve is as successful as it is right you know, if you're doing that with a plan for a compound you've done that with your recurve yeah so uh rio we're announcing this uh your new job there right around the Lancaster archery classic so i'd be remiss if we didn't point out there's only been three people ever who have shot a perfect 660 the Lancaster Archery Classic. You, of course, are one of them. You were the first to do it. Is and now you're going over there to coach Korea. So, like, what to to do us to shoot a six sixty? What does that take mentally when you're in the moment? Obviously, it takes a lot of skill. We know that, but I've seen people fall apart with six hours to go, three hours to go. I've seen it happen. Yeah. I think the biggest part is being able to talk to yourself. I learned a long time ago when it got down to the last arrows on a 300 round on a Vegas was to tell yourself you've shot 27 good ones. What's three more. And like your mind, everybody's different, but that's what I've always told myself. So when it got down to the last few for the classic, it was always like, it's three more. You've shot 57 good ones. Or when you're down to six, you know, I mean, when you've shot that many good arrows, a few more is not that hard. Yeah. So to me, it's just, little things of teaching yourself to talk to yourself. So that's where I like, I feel like I can help these guys. I think that it will be really cool to be able to, to share some of those experiences like that and stuff like that, that right. we can help get them to and stuff. So in fact, it's funny because Mike Sosner had been over there shooting with him a month ago or a oh. little bit more than that. And, uh, 
he told me the other day we were talking and he's like, they got a lot of talent. It's just teaching them. They don't know about bows. Huh. He's like, they don't understand. Like, like the girl, Oh, my bad shot hits tans. Well, we want that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> because if we look at, look at their society, PJ, it's recurve and recurve is always to try and hit the tan. Yeah. Compound's a little different. It's like, I don't want to miss a 10. Right. And yeah. so it's, it's, it's different mentalities. And so it'll be fun. I'm excited. Yeah. I'll tell you the hardest part. I'll be honest is the Korea on my back. Yeah. That's yeah. It. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I have been U S since the day I was born and you know, I mean, it's a big thing to me. I'm proud to be an American. And so we'll, we'll but, let them bar you for 10 months and then yeah. we'll claim you back. <laughs> well, that's it. Somebody else asked me, well, why hasn't the U S done it? And I said, well, cause that's not their priority right now. And yeah. so it's a big thing to get this opportunity. And, and like I said, my, uh, a friend of mine said, well, if you go over there and help them set up a program like their recurve, you can help set up any program in the world after this. It'll be a really good feather in your cap. Yeah. Well, and this, and you tell me, cause we can of course cut this out, but just yeah. you mentioning that, I, well, I guess we should ask, d do we, we don't have anything like this for the U S I mean, last I knew, well, I don't even know who the compound coach is. Is it still Griv? No, he's the he was para. A para coaching. Yeah. And he's gone. He's not there anymore. Yeah. I, we uh, never we have never had a, a specific uh, compound coach. And there and there is not one now. Yeah, I was gonna say nope. I didn't think of No, nope, they've never. In fact, when we go to World Cups and we'd go do those, we'd get the the guy who would volunteer from the recurve to come over and take care of us. Yeah, it's usually uh Chris. Um yeah. what's his Webster name? And, Chris Webster, yeah. 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 That's right. So no, it's, it's, it's different. Cause they, like I said, I have two assistants. I'm not only just the head coach there, but I have two assistants that are there helping me. One, one's over the men, one's over the women. Right. So it's a, it's a different world. They, and but like I said, they have goals and aspirations to where they want to be in a certain time. Yeah. So this is their investment. Could we benefit from a system like that versus where you're, you know, right now it's kind of separate, you know, Paige does her thing. You do your thing. You don't have to be in one place all at the same time. Yeah. See, it's a little different because we don't have athletes that live at a training center. Right. Where with Korea we have, well, they're going to expand it to eight. So they'll all have eight uh, shooters, men, eight women. So we'll have them to all work with. And that's another part. They wanted to build depth. So, I mean, yeah. when they're kicking it up to eight, I get to work with those eight and they're going to have, you know, I'm going to teach coaches how to help the others down the road. So it'll be just a big pool of like a ball building for the next four or five years. What, what age bracket are we talking about here for these archers? How old are they? Uh, the ones I have now are from like 23 to like 35. Okay. And I mean, did, are they married, have families or what's. Uh, one of them was getting married the Saturday I left. Okay. So a bunch of them had gone to go to the wedding that weekend, but for the most part, I don't think many of them are married. They're all just living kind of their athlete life. It's yeah. a thing. Live at the training center and we, we work hard all week and some go home on the weekend, some stay. Uh, my assistant coach, he's from Olson. He said, it's a two and a half hour drive home. And he said, he don't like it. It makes him tired. So he wasn't going to do it. So. <laughs> but I gotcha. laughed because my 12 and a, 12 hours of flight was a lot different than two hours. So yeah. Yeah. How about that? Well, cool. That's all I can say. Of Kyle, you got anything? Uh, how's the food? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how's the food? <laughs> well, they do, do a good like job at the training food? center. <laughs> yeah, they do have a lot of Korean food. They uh, just about every meal has kimchi. Yeah, I, not something I love. So, uh, Krishoff, when he I talked to him about this, he's like. You'll come back way, way thinner. I can tell you that. <laughs> All right, folks, that is another episode of the Competition Archery Media Podcast. Real wild. First off, congratulations. This is awesome. I can't wait to see you out there, see what you can do on this international stage like that. And thanks for being here with us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. It was always an honor. All right, folks, Competition Archery Media Podcast, you can find wherever you find your favorite podcast. Thanks for joining us.